Hello, everyone. Welcome to Around the Space Coast Hurricane Preparedness Edition. We are so excited to have you here. We have about 45 registered, 30 have already jumped on. So thank you very much for being here. I know you're here to see all of our awesome presenters and our sponsors, and of course, win the amazing giveaways that we have lined up for today's edition. I'm Jennifer Sugarman. I'm president and CEO of the Cocoa Beach Regional Chamber of Commerce. And again, just welcome to the event. Please use the chat um, as you will to put your contact information. And if you have any questions, that'll also be the place to put your questions for our presenters as well. And we'll make sure that they get asked. So with that, I'm going to share our screen and our PowerPoint. And I'm also going to make sure I share it so that the sound comes through for you when we play our videos. All right. First up, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our Siri sponsors. They have paid to sponsor this entire event every single month. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Florida Power and Light and Bart Getchens and Sea and Ski Sun Care and Sea and Ski Sanitizer, my favorite tongue twister to say, and Jessica Slater's on with us today representing them. So first up, I'm gonna let my friend Bart Getchens uh, take over. Who knows hurricane preparedness better than FPL and better than Bart? So I'm gonna let him come to you. He's so dedicated. He's doing this while he's on vacation. So welcome, Bart. Thank you for supporting our event. Well, thank you for the kind words, Jennifer. It's always great to join you. Uh, and as for expertise, you will have someone who is a highly regarded expert speaking later today. So kudos to John Scott and the, the Emergency Operations Center, because we work hand in hand to make sure that we get everything restored in this county and keep everyone safe. Um, you know, I'm on vacation today, but like John, we're around the clock. So we're always available, hopefully just like your power. Although when a hurricane comes, we can't guarantee that you will stay in power. We've invested $5 billion since the year 20, 2004. As you remember, that year we had four hurricanes that hit the state of Florida. This looks to be another active year and not something that we're looking forward to. Um, I will tell you that um, the first thing that we are asked whenever there's a hurricane is when. When am I gonna have my power back on? The second thing is where are your, your crews? Where are your trucks? I don't see them. And let me respond because if I, sometimes I will go out and patrol. I'm in an unmarked car because believe me, and I know a few of you on this call, if you saw an FPL vehicle going through your neighborhood, you'd be jumping on the hood saying, come on, it's just a tree right over here. You get that tree off and I'm good to go. But it doesn't work that way. So we go out and patrol. We also have the smart grid telling us that, hey, you're out of power. Okay, so we know the damage. But like any time, you know, when, when in World War II, General Patton didn't just say, just go over that hill and take on the Germans. You had to have some intelligence. You had to have a plan. Uh, part of that is mutual aid, bringing in many, many, many crews from all over the country that come down here. You've seen them in your neighborhood. But hopefully with the infrastructure we have in place, it won't be like 2004 where there are poles and transformers and wires all over the streets. If the wires fall down, wires are a pretty easy fix compared to poles and transformers. Um, we're often asked, well, why is my neighbor on across the street and I'm not? Why don't you like me? Well, it's different circuits. And a lot of that has to do, just like in your house, you can have different appliances on different circuits. Uh, but it's not anything like favoritism or anything like that, because I don't live in an area where there's a great deal of people. So I'm not a high priority. So even I have to sit and wait and have that generator ready. And speaking of, I'm gonna ask you guys, if you have a generator, now is the time to go out, start it up, do a test run of it, and also start preparing, getting your fuel, going to Publix, getting the needs and goods you need now so that on the day before the hurricane, you're not fighting with eight other people on that last can of sardines, because I've seen that happen before. A lot of the hurricanes are caused by vegetation. And it's funny because people call me up and say, come get my tree off your power line so you can restore my power. These are not our trees. Everybody says, well, you got to do something with the trees. Please be responsible. Put the right tree in the right place. Trim the trees. We can only go as far as 10 feet on either side of the wire. So if there's that tree that's dead and it's hanging there like the sword of Democles, you know Murphy's Law, it's not going to blow on the house. It's going to blow and take out the power lines and interrupt your service. 
uh, how we restore power. We put our crews out there, uh, the biggest bang for the buck. So right now, the number one place in Brevard County is the trauma center, the hospital, of course. They have backup generation, but we will go from the substation all the way to the meter to ensure that hospital is up and running properly. Uh, and we work every year with the Brevard EOC on where we go to first, the critical infrastructures in Brevard County, such as the 911 communication centers, the water plants, the water treatment plants, places like that where we need to restore and get them on as soon as possible to start bringing us back that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that quality of life. See, I actually listened when I was in my psychology class in college. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you don't know that. Uh, of course, down power lines. I know some people say, well, it's a cable TV line. Well, the, another time I was actually awake during some of my classes, anything can be energized. So it may look like it's a cable line. You don't know. I'm just going to tell you, treat a downed wire like you would a snake. You're not going to go over and grab it to see if it has a diamond head and fangs. So leave it alone, report it, stay away from it. Please be aware of that. Uh, I want you all to think about the app. The app will help you out. It will give you messages. Download the FPL app. You can pay your bill on it. You can do a number of things. If there is an outage, we will be able to text you and tell you what the cause was during day, regular day-to-day -day storms. And before we show the video, I want to deputize all of you because there's a tragedy every single year. People want to be good neighbors. Generators make loud noises. So we've had instances where somebody's running a generator and they look over and they say, my poor neighbor doesn't have anything. I want to let this person and their family sleep because this is noisy. So what do they do? They're tired. They're sweaty. They're not thinking. They pull the generator into the garage. And that is a deadly situation. So please, if you see your neighbors doing anything like that, you will save a life by getting over and telling them, hey, please do not do what you're doing. So please keep aware of that. So Jen, can we go ahead and show the video now, please? I love that video. I just want to give a shout out, you know, during the storm, I get to see the best restoration. I get to see the best and worst of people. I work with all our elected officials and God bless them. They are patient people. They're dealing with things that they didn't sign up for and they all have been fantastic. So we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, we're working together in this county. So let's all start thinking and taking it seriously now. You can't over prepare for a hurricane. So please be prepared. I want to thank you again, Jen. Uh, God bless the chamber. God bless Brevard County. And God bless all of you. And thank you. You're here. Thank you, Bart. And I really appreciate you doing this while you're on vacation. As you can tell, FPL never sleeps. And I think that might be my favorite video that you've shown yet. I especially <laughs> love the Marvel-like music from like a Marvel movie in the background. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um, we have several people that actually just joined us, so I hope you got the opportunity to hear Bart speak about hurricane preparedness in FPL's video. A reminder to make sure you are muted unless you are presenting. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so thank you to FPL. We're now going to move on to our second series sponsor, CN Ski Sun Care and CN Ski Sanitizer. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Make sure you're on speaker view so that you can see our friend. Jessica Slater, who is now going to uh, share her screen and also show you some products. Well, thank you for having us again. Um, I was gonna share my screen, but like Bart just mentioned, just like we can't be too prepared for a hurricane, we can't be too prepared for technology problems. 
what I should have done was put my presentation on a USB drive, but here we are. So <laughs> um, if you want to go ahead and uh, run our video, and then I'll go into a little bit more about our products and how they may come in handy for hurricane season. Do we have our video? I am working on it now. Okay, I was gonna say, I can wing that too. <laughs> Crossbrands Contract Filling is a manufacturing facility new to Melbourne, Florida that produces cosmetic skin care and FDA regulated products not only for the company itself, but for many other brands throughout the world. Among our schedule of contract fills for client companies in May of 2016, Crossbrands Contract Filling acquired Seansky an iconic sun care brand started in the late 1950s and reboot the classic UV protection line. We do statewide delivery of sunscreens with our own fleet of direct store delivery drivers to all of our partner stores within the state of Florida. 2020 began a very challenging time for everyone and we have been very fortunate to stay in business during the process. With a severe shortage of sanitizer available and being an FDA regulated facility, we were approached by multiple companies in need of product. Immediately, we began engineering our current line of formulas and were able to supply much needed hand sanitization products to our local first responders, even Disney. Our mission statement is building a great company from within with incredible people, quality products, and innovative brands all in a safe, healthy, positive work environment. We pride ourselves in our core focus of creating safe skincare solutions for all. We invite you to visit our website and social media for more information about us, from a multitude of skincare and hand sanitizer products to the Cross Brands Contract Filling Family. From our family to yours, be safe. Awesome, thank you. Um, so it's it's funny, we do all of these things to prepare for a hurricane. We go out and buy canned goods, water, ice, plywood, tarps for the roof, extra gas. Um, so we protect our property, but do we really think about what we need to do to protect ourselves? Um, typically before a hurricane, you see a lot of sun, um, we're outside um, battening down the hatches, putting up plywood, helping our neighbors. Um, and, and we don't think about the fact that we're out there in the sun, not necessarily at the beach, but still definitely in need of sun care for which we have a wide variety of products for whatever you may need. But it's really important to think about protecting your skin in those situations as well. And, and, and same thing for cleanup. Um, we spend hours and hours outside picking up tree limbs, um, Again, taking down the plywood, the shutters, whatever it may be. Um, and, and we need to make sure that we're protected. Um, in addition to that, um, stuff happens. Uh, we, we cook alternatively if we do happen to lose power, um, whether it's a butane burner on the countertop, extra grilling, um, our nerves are shot, we're stressed out, maybe not thinking. Um, a lot of people end up with burns that they wouldn't normally when cooking on a daily basis. Um, bugs, we have bug bites. Um, uh, where else was I going with that? I don't know, I'm a little I'll fluster because I was not prepared today. But um, bug bites, burns, any um, it, sunburn, if you didn't prepare and put your sunscreen on, we have a variety of products that can help with that too. Um, one of the things that I did want to highlight today is our burn relief. Um, the, not only does it have aloe, we have straight aloe if you don't want the lidocaine, but this also contains lidocaine to help take away the sting of whether it's burns, bug bites, whatever it might be. Um, great for kids, obviously keep it away from their face and hands, um, but it helps to relieve the itch, relieve the stinging, um, helps them to be a little less cranky. 
and uh, I, we keep ours in the fridge both here at the office and, and at the house because um, if it's extra cold, it's extra cooling, extra relief. Um, when you're out helping your neighbors, um, headed back to the stores, if we're without water and we can't properly wash our hands, most people know by now we have a variety of um, hand sanitizer products as well. Uh, I, we are strongly recommending to people add some of these products to your first aid kit, uh, just so you are prepared. Uh, if if we do lose power, if we sustain serious damage, we're probably not going to be open to be able to get you products um, after the fact. We are um, our lobby store is open. All of our products are available in Walmart. Um, we do depending on. Uh, timing, we will also do local delivery, whether it's for your home or your business. Um, we are here to help. So if you have any questions about how uh, any specifics about any of the, any of them, um, the sun care, I know a lot of people have questions. Um, is it reef friendly? Does it contain oxybenzone? Does it, um, a, a lot of the chemical stuff, um, our, all of our products are reef friendly. We have a variety of products that are also safe for pets and kids. So any questions, let me know. Um, my information is in the chat and uh, some lucky person is gonna get a wide variety of all of those products today. Thank you so much, Jessica. And speaking of that, I'm gonna go back to sharing our screen. And while I do that, I'm gonna introduce my friend and our host with the most, Rob Himmler. Rob is from the Melbourne Orlando International Airport. More on that in the chat. There's a document that he shared. And I'm gonna introduce him now and he's going to tell us who has won our giveaway. Thanks, Jen. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, well, we are now afternoon. Um, so yep, we did draw name and I hope they are here. Um, but this giveaway goes to Rachel Bartley. Rachel, are you with us? Hopefully. I didn't see her hop on, but we did pick a backup name just in case. All right, all right let's see. Um, and then a she backup, is, backup. She, she is part of my office. She's the sales manager of my office. Awesome. Okay, please let her know. Since you're here, we'll count it. Please let her know she's won an amazing The office manager, prize. I'm sorry. That's okay. Please let her know that she's won an amazing door prize and she can come pick it up from our chamber office in Merritt Island. Awesome, I'll let her know. And she's Thank totally so going to have to share it with you now. <laughs> yeah. everybody you. needs sanitizer awesome thanks go ahead rob awesome thanks jen and i want to just say thank you again to jessica and bart for continuing to support this event for the chamber um we are having a lot of fun with it and there's going to be more to come so um again my name is rob himmler with the airport um that would be the melbourne orlando international airport now um i accidentally i thought i was uploading it into the chat and was going to send it now but apparently when you upload a file to a chat and um zoom it automatically sends so um i could go on and on about explaining why this name is so important to us um but please, I invite you to check out the letter from our executive director, Greg Donovan, that just explains a little bit of the importance of including Orlando in our name um, to as a geographic identifier, um, posi positioning us in the Orlando region so we can continue to have visitors come to our area, um, as well as now that we get to highlight our beautiful coast with the, the the word Melbourne uh, as the first part of our name. So we're looking forward to a really bright future with the new name and um, new name, same airport, still your hometown airport, um, stress-free and easy easy to fly. So, so fly MLB. Um, but we're gonna get going on um, with the program. We have an awesome lineup um, for hurricane preparedness. We have five segment sponsors today, which include Ask an Adjuster, Brevard County Emergency Management, Rytec, Artie Pagan, State Farm Insurance Agency, and Affordable Door Service. So we're going to just jump right into it, go right into our first highlighted segment sponsor, who is Mr. John Scott, who is the director with the Brevard County Emergency Management. So, uh, sir, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you guys are good. Thank you uh, to Jen for inviting us to participate and for you guys to join us. I'm going to assume everyone can see my screen. Yes, that's a cool. Got it. Uh, so as Rob said, uh, I am the director here of Brevard County Emergency Management. 
Uh, we are the agency, we work for the county, we are the folks who coordinate all disaster response. We have been at the center of COVID for 475 days and counting. Uh, so, but we'll talk a little hurricane preparedness because that's where we are. Um, I know probably on this call, we've got some veterans to hurricanes given that we've had storms in the last four or five years. We also probably got some newcomers, but what I wanted to do was just uh, highlight some of the things that we've heard uh, over the years, uh, some of what we call myths or misconceptions, and then jump into some of our tips for our business community. So I'll start with this thing. So you probably have heard, uh, if you're like me, you born and raised in this fine county in this town, uh, you've heard that we don't get hurricanes. That's why they put the Space Center here. Or maybe you've heard the other one, which is there's a sacred Indian uh, burial ground that has a bubble that protects us. None of that is true. We absolutely positively get hurricanes. They put the Space Center here for real space reasons, uh, nothing to do with uh, protection of hurricanes. And really, since 1850, we've had about 47 uh, tropical storms of hurricanes that have come within 50 miles of us. In the last years, we since 2016, we had uh, Matthew, Irma, and Dorian, Isaias, and Ada all come uh, in that area. So we absolutely positively get storms. So if you could help us out and people say uh, we're protected, if you could tell them no, that's not true, that's uh, crazy, and you're crazy, and I said they're crazy, that would help us out a lot. Uh, second thing we get, uh, it's probably the thing we actually get the most in the lead up to any storm. Uh, we'll get in the neighborhood of probably 500 to 1,000 calls with this exact question, regardless of whether or not we put it out on social media, which we do a lot of. Uh, what time are causeways going to close before a storm? So again, in the, in the world of uh, rumor control for me, uh, let folks know we do not close storms, or I'm sorry, we do not close causeways prior to storms. Uh, we will close them after storms. We want to make sure the area is safe. Uh, we don't like to move high vehicle traffic on them during storms, but it is entirely too dangerous to close a causeway uh, in the lead up to a storm. Uh, so the answer is when do they close? The uh, never. They never close prior to a storm. We want people to have as much time to evacuate as possible. Let's talk about evacuations. People always want to know do they have to stay? Do they have to go? Uh, we encourage people in harm's way to evacuate. But what does harm's way mean? The easiest way to do it for us is to kind of reverse the question. So if you want to stay, what do you have to sort of do to qualify to stay from a risk standpoint? So do you live in a storm surge zone or a flood prone zone? If the answer to that is yes, evacuate. Do you live in a city that has a beach or an island in its name? If the answer is yes, you're in an evacuation zone, evacuate. Do you live in a mobile or manufactured home? If the answer is yes, you should evacuate. Mobile and manufactured homes simply fail at a, at a lower wind speed uh, and, and sustain more damage. So they, they very quickly become unsafe. Do you live in a home that has protection from windows and you have protection on your windows and doors? If the answer is yes, you can stay. Do you live in a house that doesn't depend on, or I'm sorry, do you, does your health uh, depend on reliable access to power and water? If the answer is yes, your health needs those things, then you should evacuate because we know that and we've already talked about the idea that we're likely going to lose power for any sort of significant event. And we've seen previously, especially for our barrier islands, that our water system can be vulnerable. Again, all of those kinds of things are the, the sort of the checklist you should be doing when deciding whether or not to evacuate. Let's talk about where you're going to go if you evacuate. Uh, a lot of folks think that they can outrun a hurricane, so they're going to go to Georgia, they're going to go to Orlando, they're going to go to Maine or California or wherever. Uh, the truth is you don't have to do any of those things. You can safely evacuate in Brevard County, and we encourage people to do that. We want folks to go tens of miles, not hundreds of miles. And why do we want that? Because the experience is better. If you go all the way to Georgia, it's expensive, it's time consuming. And oftentimes you will get to Georgia and you'll find out that uh, you know, the storm has changed or something has happened. And now you've got to deal with all of that getting back and, and traffic's never pleasant. Uh, we've learned a lot of lessons over time when it comes to evacuating. What we want folks to do is get out of a storm surge zone or a flood area, 
So get out of the water and get into a strong uh, building. So something that's newer, something that's got hurricane windows or shutters, uh, something that is protected and ideally would have a generator, but that's not necessarily a requirement. So run from the water, hide from the wind. You can ride out a storm in Brevard County very safely, even a category five, just get in a good, strong building. I promise you those are gonna be better options for you than trying to find a hotel in Atlanta and the nightmare that those kinds of things can do. And just while we're here, one of the other things we, we hear a lot from folks is when they do evacuate, they um, have a weird level of disappointment when they come back and find out that their house is fine. Um, the goal here is that, is that you evacuate, you get out of harm's way, you and your family are safe, and you come back to what we hope is minimal damage. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have evacuated. That's the wrong lesson to learn. The right lesson is I had a better experience, mm -hmm. my family was safe, and as a bonus, I don't have nearly the recovery to do. So uh, talk about shelters. Everyone wants to know about shelters. Shelters are um, focused on life safety and not folks' comfort. Uh, I like to talk about that up, up in advance. We talk about a shelter as a lifeboat and not a cruise ship. So there is no concierge service. Our goal is to keep you alive while you are there and return you to your home uh, the way you came and uh, found us at the shelter. We used to, prior to Matthew, publicize lists about which shelters will be used and where they people go to find because we thought it was a good planning tool. What we found was um, folks didn't read the caveat that said, we don't always open every shelter every time because they're not always needed. We don't always need to open all those. And so folks during Matthew started showing up at shelters that weren't open, were never going to be open, and there was entirely too much confusion. So we changed. We now only announce the shelters that are going to be open. We only publicize those lists when we're actually going to open them. So there is no list of shelters right now today because we're not going to open the shelter. But what we will promise you is that if we issue an evacuation order, we'll also have a list of shelters for folks to go. And you will have plenty of time to both evacuate safely and get to a shelter before the winds get there and conditions get scary. So that's easy for us to do. We make sure you do that. And there's a lot of ways you can find out how to do that, where those lists are, we're in all media streams, where uh, we have text alerts, we're on social media, all of those places, we get that list out far and wide. Uh, one of the last things I want to touch on is just delays in service. We talked to Bart touched on the idea that you know restoration of power loss is a thing that's going to drive a lot of our recovery efforts. We know that debris is out there, but folks should be really cognizant of you know, while a storm is coming, and if, you know in the next you know 24 to 48 hours post storm, emergency services may also be impacted. So if you're thinking of staying, and that if it gets weird or scary or something goes wrong, 911 will come rescue you. The sad truth is that's not a guarantee. They will want to come get you, but it's not necessarily safe for them to do that. You can't risk all of that crew's life to come, uh, to come and get you when you chose to stay. So if at all, again, you're concerned about your health, your family's health, your safety, you're in a vulnerable location, evacuate is the easiest answer. Mark talked about power. I'm not going to really touch on that. Just again, be prepared for it. Um, and it's probably going to be a couple of days. I don't think power comes back immediately. Well, Irma, we got power back and FPNL did a great job. And it took them, I think, seven days to get to get about 95% of the population back. Irma was a similar kind of event uh, to what we saw in 04. And that, the shortest period of time they had was 14 days to reach that same number. So they made a large amount of improvements in the years, but it's not instantaneous, everything's back. So make sure you've got the appropriate uh, supplies and your expectations are ready for that kind of thing. Let's talk about businesses real quick. There are a couple of key points we talk about businesses and, and for you all on the call. A variety of studies put the number at somewhere between 25% and 40% of all small businesses impacted by a disaster will not open, or I should say reopen. Uh, that's a pretty big and scary number. Those numbers change pretty drastically when you start to actually incorporate preparedness into your 
uh, daily business plan. Hopefully uh, you've got a plan, you're writing it down. Uh, one of the things we talk about in this office is it's nice to have an idea of what you're going to do, but when you actually write down that idea, you have a plan and you're far more likely to actually implement and execute that. The second thing when we talk about businesses, and you all know this, is you know, your staff, your team is the lifeblood of your organization. And we've talked about the idea that employee preparedness is business preparedness. So making sure that your employees are ready to go, that they're taking all the steps that you are also taking as a business owner, and that you guys are modeling a good example of that both professionally at your business and in your personal lives as well. Making sure you've identified your key staff members, making sure they know what, they, what you expect from them and you know what their limitations are. So where they live, what their access to your business is gonna be. Insurance, I know insurance is gonna come next, so I won't, I won't talk a ton about it, but a couple of keys is really understand what your insurance covers and what, you, you know, what that process to make a claim is. And we strongly encourage you to have business interruption insurance. That's really gonna be that sort of, you know, what you need to get through there uh, and sort of bridge the gap until you can back up and running and return to a normal state. The other thing is on your supply chains. Understand that if you're a business that require or relies on other people to help you provide your products, really know what that supply chain is, where its weaknesses are, and have some ideas of how you're going to sort of bridge that gap as well. I think COVID really exposed some pretty significant gaps in supply chains. So really taking the time to understand that. And then lastly, uh, on sort of things is we talk about the idea that recovery starts with preparedness. Folks like to wait for the storm to happen, the impacts to be there and figure out what they're gonna do from a recovery standpoint. But your plan should include what you're gonna do as soon as the winds die down and it's safe to move outside. That's you starting recovery before the impacts ever get there. That's what we do here at the Emergency Operations Center. We're planning for recovery days before we get impacted so that we're ready to execute as soon as it's safe to do so. Lastly, I'll just encourage everyone, these are our five steps that we want folks to do. Know your risks, to build a disaster supply kit, to make a plan and write it down, to stay informed, to know where to get good information, and then get involved in our community and help give back with groups that participate because we talk about recovery from a community solution. Recovery is not a government solution, it is a community solution. Ways you can stay informed. We have text alerts, which come straight to your phone from us. You simply text Brevard EOC to 888-777. Uh, You'll get them right from us. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Uh, if you're not someone who's social media savvy, 211 is our community information hotline. They embed with us during storms. They're a great place to do. Uh, also National Weather Service, the Hurricane Center, all have great information, all for that alerts. Uh, and Jim, that's what I got. We appreciate you. We did have a question come through the chat while you were speaking. How can someone find out if they are in a storm surge zone? So you can go to our website, which is ianbrevard.com. You go under hurricanes and it has a thing you can put your address in to see. The best thing I can tell you is if you live near a large body of water, so if you're in you're on a barrier island, you're probably in some sort of storm surge zone, whether it's a category one through five. If you live near a river tributary, so Turkey Creek, O'Galley, like right along that, you're probably going to see some storm surge. If you're in a low lying area east of US 1, you're going to probably see some storm surge. Center parts of Merritt Island are a little bit better, but um, also remember if you do live on a barrier island, that's why we say if you're on a barrier island, we want you to evacuate. You depend on causeways for access and support. And if we lose an approach to a causeway, uh, then obviously uh, relief is going to be delayed in getting to you. Very good advice. If anyone else has a follow up question for John, please put it in the chat and he will go in and answer your question directly in the chat just for the sake of time so we can continue on with our next segment sponsor. So I'm going to turn it back over to Rob Himmler. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. And thank you, John. Honestly, we're getting a lot of uh, messages about the text alerts and how awesome they are. 
Um, so thank you for all that you and your team do to keep us informed and, and help prepare our community, um, especially over the last year. Um, so we do have a giveaway. This one is pretty awesome. Um, they're all awesome, but this one has a Google Home, a business card holder, a wireless charger, and notepads. And we did draw, and the winner for this one was Susan McCarthy. And I did do double check, and she was on just a few minutes ago. Um, but Susan, congratulations. Uh, but we're going to keep on keeping on. Um, our next segment sponsor is one of my friends, Chelsea Camaro Lentz, um, the Vice President of Marketing and Business Development with Ask and Adjuster. So Chelsea, over to you. So much. All right, so let me just get our presentation up here and we'll get started. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon. So as Rob said, I'm Chelsea Camaro Lentz with Ask an Adjuster. So we are your local public adjusting firm. Um, and you know, we just kind of wanted to bring a different side of hurricane preparedness to the community today and to our business partners um, because it's so important when it comes to not only being prepared um, on everything that um, you know, was just presented on from emergency management point of view, but also from an insurance point of view, because as we all know, living in Florida for, you know, no matter how long, short or long of a time, um, as Florida residents, it doesn't necessarily have to be hurricane season for us to know uh, that, you know, damage happens and to your home or property or business. And the more prepared you are, um, the easier of a process it would be. So we can get started. So just a little bit about um, my company and my team and what exactly who we are and what we do. So we're a team of public insurance adjusters and we represent um, policyholders across the state of Florida in their claims against the insurance company to ensure that the policyholders are paid quickly and fairly. Um, so we're the largest firm in the state. We have 80 adjusters ranging from North Florida down to South uh, the Keys, as you can see. And we've handled over 40,000 insurance claims claims in the 15 years that we've been in business. Um, and so what's new in hurricane preparedness? So, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened this year already since January through the legislative sessions that is um, crucial for homeowners and business owners to truly know and be aware of prior to the storms happening. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a hurricane for, you know, for you all to need to be informed of these things. So a couple questions that we're gonna touch on is can a roofer assist with my property insurance claim? What can I do to truly be prepared for my home or property um, and or business before the storm um, when it comes to insurance and then um, do I need to have my policy reviewed before a storm by a third party and then what happens when I'm not happy with the, with the results of my property claim and one other thing that I did forget to add in here is um, what vendors should you have in place prior to a storm as well um, local might I add so continuing on. So to the question, um, can contractors assist with my insurance claim? So I know we have a few of them on the, on the call today. So, you know, this is definitely some great information to be aware of prior to any storm happening, because we all know in Florida, we get all those storm chasers that come down and they say, you know, let me do this for you. Let me do that. And, you know, at the end of the day, everybody in Florida, they have a license to do what they're specialized in doing. Um, so as a public adjuster, we are specialized and in, in licensed to assist in insurance claims um, for the policyholder to ensure they're paid quickly and fairly. For contractors, they are licensed um, and specialized in, in, you know, experts in preparing damages. And so the state of Florida during the legislative sessions definitely honed in on that. And they came up with a new statute and um, a bill, SB 76, if anybody is familiar with that, that essentially they came to the conclusion that they want to ensure that contractors stick to what they are specialized in, and that is truly fixing damages. Um, you know, as you all have known, if you're a homeowner or own property and have insurance policies on those properties, then your rates have probably gone up. And, you know, the state of Florida and our, you know, our government have finally come to the conclusion that they decided, and, you know, after 
a lot of studying, realized that it was due to a lot of litigation claims and attorneys getting involved and contractors assisting with claims. And that is kind of the result of, um, of this, is the statute coming in place. So essentially uh, now contractors are not allowed to assist and roofers are not allowed to either use the words insurance if they are speaking to you about your roof or your damages as a whole. Um, and they are not allowed to offer to review your policy. They're not allowed to help you with your claim. Um, and, you know, essentially before this statute even came into place um, in the state of Florida, it is also a third degree felony for any profession to pose as a public adjuster. So there have been many, many people and bad actors throughout the state that have actually been arrested for doing such things. And you know, now our, um, you know, the Tallahassee has just continued to add to that and by adding these statutes and putting them into place. Um, so be aware whenever we do have a storm, no matter if it's a hail storm or a tropical storm or a hurricane, um, if somebody comes knocking on your door and says, I can get you a free roof, that's something to be a little cautious of. Now, if it is a public adjuster and says that I can help you get your roof paid by your insurance policy after reviewing your policy and seeing if it if is a covered loss, that's a different story. Um, and this is also that statute that I mentioned that it says that contractors are not allowed to adjust. So negotiate, file, or, you know, or work the claim on behalf of you as the policy holder. So these are some frequently asked questions that we get from a lot of our clients and a lot of um, prospects whenever we're going through the process of kind of re reviewing the policy and advising homeowners and business owners on the potential of filing claim if there is damages that is covered by their policy. So I think the number one thing is, will my premiums go up or will my insurance company drop me after filing a claim? And the answer is in you know most cases, no. Most premiums are raised annually with or without a claim being filed and you pay for insurance on an annual basis. And it's only good business sense to truly um, utilize that policy that you pay for, uh, for what it's worth. You know, your policy is owed for you to be brought back to whole after any loss. And that is something that we can help you also determine if it is a loss through your policy and if you are owed that. Um, and you also have the right to call us before the insurance company with any claims. And with a lot of our clients, you know, that's always going to be a huge advantage um, because we have the opportunity to present our claim out of the gate for you to get you the most money that you deserve. Um, and this is, again, for any commercial or residential uh, claims. So can you file your claim uh, for your home um, or if you live in a condo for your association uh, on your own? Yes, but it also stands to reason that you are not going to go to court without having an attorney to represent you because they are truly the expert on the law. Um, so, you know, you should it in most cases, file a claim on your own without having a public adjuster to truly represent you. Um, you know, in a, in a recent case that I can I can mention that, you know, one of our fellow chamber friends, they had some plumbing issues and went ahead and called the insurance company, filed a claim and had a contractor come out, start digging up their whole entire plumbing systems. And um, they had assumed and that they're plumbing was not covered and they were immediately denied. Well, after the fact that they've already now tore up their whole entire piping, pipes and everything, um, their access to their pipes was a covered loss and not the pipes themselves. So they are now, um, you know, unfortunately past the point of our assistance, but that's just one thing that we can help advise homeowners and business owners on um, and how we interpret the policies. Um, and why, you know, having a resource like us is truly helpful. Um, so I can 100% share these with everybody if you uh, want to continue to read these, but I definitely want to keep things moving for sake of time. So does your policy um, truly have you covered? So whenever we review a policy for our clients, this is these are some things that we focus on that, you know, if you wanted us to take a look at your policy or if you wanted to review your policy yourself, um, typically they're anywhere from 75 to 100 plus pages, whether it's a residential or commercial policy. So at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're deductibles are in line. Um, you know, unfortunately, one of our 
local property managers, they sent one of their clients to us that um, did not have a tenant in the property, but they had uh, assumed that they maybe had some hurt, some hail damage because there were some interior leaks. We first, before going out to the property to do an inspection, reviewed their policy and they had a 10% hurricane deductible and we're told by their insurance agent uh, that was very new to the industry as an agent that it would fall under their hurricane deductible and not their other deductible. Um, so as you, some of you may know, in Florida, a hurricane deductible average is anywhere from between two to 3%. So that is something that we 100% advise them to go back to their agent and have their coverage revised. Um, Dispute resolutions. What exactly does your policy dictate that if you don't agree with your insurance company on anything that's a claim, um, what do you do past that point? There's something very tricky that's been in policies that we've been finding in our clients' um, policies lately that is called a New York State Arbitration Clause. That if you come into a disagreement with your insurance company, you now have to go to the state of New York under New York State law and arbitrate that claim and dispute it with a New York State attorney. Even though your property is here in Florida, that's what that says. Um, it's pretty sticky, but knowing that that's in there before you come to that uh, situation is, is really important. Um, so coverages, amounts and types. What do you truly have coverage for? Your mold, water, um, any other types of damage that are, are common in Florida. We want to make sure that you have all of those in line before the damage occurs. Um, exclusions. There is a lot of other sticky exclusions in there right now. So there's one, it's actually a Hurricane Irma exclusion. And you might be thinking, okay, great. Well, Hurricane Irma is already passed. How does that truly affect me right now? Well, the verbiage, that's the huge part about reviewing the policies and having an expert review them. So in that exclusion that says Hurricane Irma or Tropical Storm Irma exclusion, it also states that uh, it not only excludes any damages from Hurricane or Tropical Storm Irma, but anything aggravated by it. So any storm after Hurricane Irma, the, the insurance company might think that you did not properly do any repairs or replacements to, and they say that this new hurricane or storm aggravated those damages, then everything is excluded. It's pretty tricky. Um, service of suit, so including timelines for claims reporting, and then duties after a loss. So these are the types of claims that we can assist with. So again, out, even outside of hurricane season, um, a lot of things that some of you might uh, recognize that you have dealt with or know family or friends that have dealt with um, that are 100% things that could be covered in your policy and is always worth a free policy review and a free inspection just to make sure. And again, these are all things that I can send out to anybody who is interested um, after the presentation. <laughs> So here's a couple inspection pictures that we take for our clients just to show you the detailed images that we present on behalf of our clients to the insurance company. And this is huge when it comes to hurricane damage because we use weather reporting and very detailed information in our claims packages. And especially with hurricanes in Florida, it's easy for you know everybody to say, well, that was pre-existing condition. Oh, the homeowner was, you know, just didn't properly maintain the property. Um, so we help prove that and ensure that you are paid for something that is hurricane damage or related to whatever specific weather event it was caused by. And then this is essentially the process that we go through for um, any type of inspection, but especially after a hurricane or a storm, um, it's a very detailed process. So our inspections typically take two hours and we go through the whole property top to bottom because if there's anything that was damaged by the hurricane, then that is something that we want to ensure that we're finding it and making sure that you're paying the proper deductible for. Um, so the inspection, the policy review. If you have an ongoing claim, that's something that we can come in and then represent you um, while the claim is in process. So we want to photograph, draw sketches, and obtain all required documentation to prepare an estimate. Um, you know, in the public adjuster's world, this is something that is every day to us. And there's not many professions that go through the detailed process of this, especially following a hurricane. Um, and the timelines now, if anybody also is not aware of what happened in the legislative, legis, legislative session, sorry, say that 10 times fast, um, 
it gets kind of a little tricky because now your timelines to actually file a claim have been shortened. So now you have two years to file a new claim and one year to have to reopen a claim. So if it was denied or underpaid, then you only have one year past that. So essentially what you had five years before for any non-hurricane claims and three years for a hurricane claim, you now only have three years for all claims moving forward in the state of Florida. So that's pretty much all we have for you today. Um, if you want to go ahead and scan that barcode, if you have any other questions um, or comments or you want any of the information that we have in the presentation today, please feel free to scan the code. It gives you our information for my team. Um, my personal information is there if you want to direct those questions to me. Um, but, you know, we just want to be a resource for everybody, the business community and your home um, when it comes to any type of damages, but especially hurricane season. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chelsea. And there are a few questions in the chat. I'm hoping you can maybe answer them in the chat um, so we can um, keep moving on. But that was very informative. Super awesome. So thank you we'll for do. joining us today. Thank you. All right. So we got another giveaway. Everyone loves giveaways. Um, and this one was donated by Cabana Boutique in Merritt Island. Um, it includes um, two glasses, bottle opener, and ice cubes. And we did draw a winner. And that goes to Jill Whittemore. So congratulations, Jill. Um, please confirm in the chat that you're still with us. All right, we're gonna keep moving on. Um, our next segment sponsor is Artie Pagan, a State Farm Insurance agent. Artie has been associated with State Farm since 1987. So he's been in the business for a little while and spent several years in operations management in the corporate office. In his office in Vieira Suntree, their commitment is to first serve the needs of their customers. They have a team of seasoned and knowledgeable insurance agents with a total of almost 100 years of insurance agency experience between them all. Artie's office combines systems and technology and experience to provide a high level of service to their customers. Um, so please call Artie for a free quote on auto, home, business, health, and life insurance. But right now we're going to go right to a video um, on the importance of having a home inventory list. <laughs> or do one if you've never done it, an inventory of the contents of your home. Whether it's taking pictures or video with your smartphone or simply writing down your inventory list. So if and when you have a claim, you have documented proof of the items that you own. It's very important to make your claim smoother and easier to process. The fire came across from Mission Canyon the Jesusita fire, and it jumped over here. When it came over this way, this entire house burnt, the garage, all this was gone. If you haven't lost your home, paper is a good way to do it, but videoing it with your smartphone these days, very simple, very easy. really triggers your, your mind into silverware, plates, pots and pans. There's just so much in the kitchen, especially. You could never write it down. It's definitely video because they're one of a kind. You need to have your important files ready to go or yeah. really easily accessible. I agree. Ready Easy. to go. Yeah, ready to go. Take the backup drive. It's in the cloud, but this is 
a lot easier to have, and it feels good to have it with you. So in 1978, my husband having graduated from UCSB, the local school here, I uh, wanted to stay, so he purchased some land and started building the house. We moved in in the 80s, and then May 7th hit, <laughs> 2009, and the haste to see the fire uh, went through our canyon. Well, I was actually nearby at a friend's house, and I started hearing sirens and helicopters. And we thought, oh, they're going to get this out, but we're leaving anyway. It's never been our intention to ever stay. Because we're so well insured, it, we were able to comfort the children by saying, here you go, go get what you need. And within, I think, three months, we're already with building permit in hand. We just had a positive experience. We knew where State Farm was, where checks were being cut for immediate expenses, and life was great. We were going to be able to survive. Um, we had one girl finishing high school, one in college. So during the rebuild, we had two in college and uh, family living with us, building the house. We were able to take our time and move from our rented house that State Farm was taking care of into our new home. I was able to have furniture delivered to the new home while still being in the rented house. Everything was, was unbelievable. It was just so smooth. Um, and that's being prepared thanks to Irene and we're able to communicate with Irene. When I say, hey, I don't understand this, she explains it. Awesome, thanks Jen for that. And you can see everyone, um, Artie's information was down there. If you have any questions for him, I hope you reach out to him, um, his email and his phone number. So thank you Artie for, for supporting us today and, and joining us today. Um, we're gonna go keep on going on. We just get, we got another giveaway, two more sponsors and then more giveaways. So stay for the giveaways and we're almost done. This is 60-ish minutes. So the next giveaway is, was donated from um, by Artie. It's two gift cards, one to Outback and one to Carabas. Um, and we did draw names and I confirmed that they're with us. Um, so the Outback gift card goes to Melissa Wilbrand. Congratulations, Melissa. And the Carabas gift card goes to Ron Burford. So congrats, Ron. Um, and thank you both for joining us. Enjoy, enjoy your dinner. Um, over at those places. So we're gonna keep on going. Um, our next segment sponsor, our fourth fourth one is Barb Lynch with Rytech uh, Incorporated Water Damage and Mold Specialists. So I am going to, um, off to you, Barb. <laughs> okay, I'm getting, I just shared my screen. So my PowerPoint should come up, right? Yeah. Um, hmm. Might have to try it one more time. Try it one more time. I just stopped sharing our slides. Okay. There you go. All right, great. Well, it's an honor to be here. And we are Rytech, water damage and mold specialists. We're the ones you call after the storm. So I can approach this one of two ways. I could talk to you all about Rytech and what we are and who we are and what we do. And part of the presentation is that, but I'm also gonna to speak to you from a personal experience because Hurricane Matthew, um, when my claim was finally all completed and done, it came in around $40,000 worth of damage because I wasn't prepared. So my question to you is, are you ready? So I thought about what, how should I approach this? And I'm going to talk about top 10 things. So first of all, we've already covered this, but are you in a flood zone? Are you in a surge zone? You need to find this out. Know it. Find it out. Um, check out your flood insurance. I recently went to a, a FEMA presentation. It was a three-hour class, and it was really informative information, but bless the guy's heart. It was a boring subject, and the poor guy had no oomph and I looked around the room because I was getting kind of tired and did see some people sleeping. But flood insurance is an important factor that you and I need to be know, you need to know about. 
Um, look at you, find out if you're in a flood zone, get your flood insurance and policies typically take 30 days to go into effect. So don't procrastinate, work on this. Know your deductibles, we've already talked about that. And specifically with mold, check your policy to see if you have mold coverage. And if you do, is there a cap? Because if you have water damage, mold starts growing right away, so you have to move quickly. You can um, learn more about um, flood insurance through the FEMA website, and also um, check your policy to see if you have contents coverage. Um, during 2004, 2005 hurricanes, we did have a power, we did have a generator because we lost power for I think 17 hours. Um, some areas were out for seven days in my area, but we had a generator, but guess what? We ran out of gas. So have your generator, but have backup gas. Um, my aunt lives with me, she's 89, she's on oxygen. We have portable oxygen tanks here ready to go if I have to evacuate her or if we lose power. Um, Matthew, I wasn't prepared for, but Irma, I was. Irma came knocking, but Irma did not get in because additionally we had sandbags, we had foam. I did evacuate on both, but you need to be prepared and you need to have shutters. You need to have your windows secured. You need to know the difference between wind-driven rain and groundwater and check again to see if your policy covers that. Um, I did not take pictures and have inventory list of my contents because uh, we just put the sandbags down and left. And um, I had to go by memory what was in that section, what was on that wall, because I did not do the inventory. I did not have pictures. So very strong suggestion and important that you do this. Um, a disaster preparation list. Um, I'm, we're not Pollyannas and we're not disaster Dianas, but we need to be prepared. You need to have very specific things on hand. Um, don't forget about your pets, their shot records, bring their food, their leashes, um, and their bedding because they're gonna be out of sorts being taken from their homes, especially if you go to a pet friendly shelter or a hotel, you need to have something with them that they're familiar with. Um, backup medicines, a two week supply. If you have an ID ER band, make sure you have it on and a mini emergency kit because I loved what John, some of the points John um, brought out. The shelters are not a concierge service. Um, they're a, a lifeboat, um, not a cruise ship. So you have to be responsible, be prepared and take response and, be, and bring stuff with you. Um, flashlights. Each person in your home should have their own flashlight. I would recommend two sizes. Um, make sure you have your power cords, backup, um, backup devices, batteries of all sizes, copy of important documents. And um, when we were out of power for my area for about seven days, um, the ATMs, you couldn't get money out. So you need to have cash, cash on hand, at least $200, they say, and small bills. Um, gas, have backup gas for your generators, get as many um, of those red tanks that you can get filled up, stored safely in your home. And also if you're gonna be grilling, get a couple more propane tanks. Um, I read this photo, you should have a photo of you and your pet in case they get lost, especially if it's a valuable pet, you should have a picture of you and the dog. Um, know your evacuation routes, just don't wait till the evacuation report comes out or you get that text. Know your evacuation route and your, um, your shelter. Um, portable radios, um, who has one of them, but we should have one of them. And shutters, um, hurricane shutters. Non-perishable food, you need to have these on hand and a couple of can openers because if you have an electric can opener and you don't have power, you have no way to open the can. So be prepared. Um, water, at least a three day supply per person in your family and personal hygiene, toilet paper, hand wipes, sea and skis uh, sanitizer uh, and feminine hygiene products. You should have these on hand and you should be able to just take that bag and leave. Um, and then not only know your evacuation area, but know when it's safe to come back. 
um, and make sure that the area is safe and don't take any risks. My neighbor did not evacuate. My neighborhood was, the police had to get to the different neighbors that stayed on a jet ski because we had so much water here because I live on a barrier island and it wasn't safe for us to come home for at least two days after everything was cleared. Um, know who your insurance agent is, know who you are insured with, the carrier. Um, Rytec is, we are 365 days, 24 seven. We are all throughout the state of Florida and we are national. And um, there's my personal cell phone and my name is Barb Lynch and it's an honor to participate and to be involved in around the space coast. Thank you very much. That was awesome, Barb. Thank you so much. And I feel like we're all going to be calling you when the next hurricane's coming around for this list, because this is probably the best list for hurricane preparedness I've ever seen. So oh, thank you awesome. so much for joining us today. Um, another giveaway, surprise. Um, this one is a gift card to Rockledge Country Club, which was donated by Ritex. So thank you very much. And we drew the winner, and it is Lisbeth Mandeville. I think I said your last name right, but congratulations um, for the Country Club gift card. All right, and on to our final and fifth segment sponsor, who is Pam Avery with Affordable Door Service. Over to you, Pam. Thanks for Hello. being here. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, well, my name is Pam Avery, and I'm the owner of Affordable Door Service, along with my husband. Uh, we are a residential and commercial garage door company. I didn't name our company. I'm not ever, I have always asked him why he never put garage door in the, the title. But anyway, um, that's just between him and I. Uh, <laughs> we install, repair, and service all garage doors and open, openers, commercial and residential. Um, we've been in business over 27 years and serving Brevard County for that long. Our tagline is need a reference, ask your neighbor. Uh, it says a lot for our, our company. We do have a lot of repeat business as well as, ton, as, well as tons of referrals. Um, I give a lot of that credit to my husband. He's a perfectionist and he takes pride in his work. And that's really important. As we know, the garage door is the largest opening in your house. And <clears throat> as we're preparing for hurricane season or after hurricane season, we all know that there's a need for safety in that. Um, I don't have a fancy presentation uh, prepared for all of you today. I was kind of last minute to the party, but I definitely wanted to share some valuable information um, with hopes that we all share, share and learn from each other today, which obviously we have. There's been so many uh, great, just so much great information given out already. Uh, after the 2004 hurricanes, which we all are aware of, Charlie, Francis, Ivan, and Jean. Um, also, my son was born in 2004, so this year was like awesome for me professionally and um, <laughs> personally. Anyway, Florida was of course flooded with all kinds of construction workers like Chelsea brought up earlier. Um, basically a lot of unlicensed people wreaking havoc all over Florida, taking advantage of our of desperate homeowners, just trying to get back to normal. Um, that is when the construction industry really changed. Permits were required, building codes were super strict and very confusing for a lot of people. Um, now we find ourselves in kind of a different situation. It's new. Um, we have shortages of products. Uh, the rise of prices are, are right at our back door. But wait, we don't even have that. We have Brevard County is growing at a rate of 10 to 1. So for every one person moving out, there are 10 more moving in. So the demand um, for new residential structure is super high right now. It's not a bad problem to have in construction. Um, everyone says, oh, how's the garage door business? And the punchline is always, oh, it's up and down, but technically it is. It's, <laughs> it is up and down, but in a literal sense, as far as economically, sometimes we have that as well. Um, so it's really important that we recognize the need for quality licensed professionals. Um, all of these new people moving in are moving in a lot of them from out of state. So they have no clue of what Florida building codes are. So I wanted to give everyone a little lesson on how not all garage doors are made the same. They're, they're not. Uh, since we're talking hurricane preparedness today, let's talk about wind codes versus impact rated doors. These two words will not just affect your safety through a storm, um, but they'll also affect your pocketbook with your homeowner's insurance. Most consumers do not understand the difference. So here are a few facts. Wind codes all over the state of Florida, 
we have win code requirements that all new gar garage doors have to meet when they're in new garage doors installed is what I'm referring to. It just depends on where you live, of course. Uh, these are based on negative and positive pressures. So positive pressures try to push the garage door in. And of course, the negative pressures try to pull the garage door out. And it they're called PSIs. So Basically, that's what we refer to when we're giving a free estimate. Um, we want to make sure that people understand where they're located as far as um, what the PSI is going to be for them. What people do not understand, and I see it a lot, is that not all garage doors have to be impact rated, but impact resistant refers to the ability of the garage door and the garage door glazing, that's the windows, the glazing, to resist the penetration from flying debris under a high wind event storms uh of course a hurricane but again as a consumer when you hear hurricane rated <clears throat> most of us assume that would be included like of course it's impact rated because it's hurricane rated um, i know that a lot of other companies install hurricane rated doors but only per wind codes without divulging that information to the homeowner <clears throat> which brings me back to my point of safety and your homeowner's insurance safety of course from flying debris and then of course money with your um, HOI because most insurance companies really wanna see that impact rated door for discounts. So it does factor in with your windows, ex other exterior doors, of course your roof. But um, my point is that as a consumer, make sure you choose a quality garage door company or any company at that, at that point with the exterior um, factors that you have, your roof, your other doors, your, your um, Yep, my garage doors, let's just put it that way. Uh, the knowledge of both wind code and impact rated. So we only sell impact rated doors to our customers unless otherwise requested. Um, they also, there's nothing that can be added, just FYI, there's nothing that can be added to your garage door mod that can modify it to um, bring it to code. So do not buy the racket that, yeah, we, we'll, we can make your garage door um, hurricane rated because you just cannot do it. It's impossible. You'll spend more money um, on metal, just adding metal to your garage door, but no guarantees that it would hold up in a storm and your insurance company will not approve it. These hurricane rated doors are professionally tested, so there's no way that they can be tested on the field unless you have some huge machine that goes out there and does it. Um, so the best way to make sure that you are in fact, getting a licensed contractor is permits. And I know sometimes it can be a real pain in the butt to get. Um, I get them all the time. And I, um, we're in Brevard County, so it's not just the county that you're in. You're in the cities and um, some, some they all have their different ways of doing it. They're trying to make it as easy as possible, but it, it does take a little bit of time. So um, <clears throat> if a garage door company says they can install same day, hmm, they're probably not getting a permit. Uh, there's there have been some circumstances that we've encountered that if it's an emergency situation, as long as we've applied for the permit, they'll allow us to install the door. But for the most part, it's a couple of days, sometimes weeks, of course, if it's after a storm or during a busy time with construction. And of course, now we're kind of a little scared because of the the lack of um, material that's available. It's coming, but it's slower. Uh, so just make sure that you do get a permit. It's extremely important to do that, to protect your property. Um, it also, you know, sometimes without a permit, that, that installer could just be basically, if they're, not, if they're not applying the garage door correctly, like attaching it to the wood jams correctly, it's just like leaning it up against the opening in a storm and it'll blow out, <laughs> either blow in or get sucked out, one of the two. So Make sure you're using quality products. Um, we have a we have a great relationship with a lot of manufacturers, um, that kind of thing. Um, I can send brochures to everyone as far as uh, what we use. You can go on our website, which I put in the chat, as well as our email, as well as our contact information. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, does anyone have any questions or comments or anything? I know we're Thank kind of on you. a time stream. <laughs> No, that's awesome. If anyone has questions, please put them in the chat and I'm going to turn it over to Rob. Well, that's pretty much, that's it. So thank you, Pam. Thank you to all of our sponsors making this yet again, another successful event. Jen, thank you for allowing me to be a part of it yet again. Um, you haven't fired me yet, so I appreciate it. And everyone, it's time to get prepared. Um, 
better better now than later. So thanks again, everyone. And back to you, Jen. Thank you so much. I just want to throw in a quick plug for the next one of these will happen on July 30th with the military theme. So we look forward to seeing you then. If you won a prize, please come by the chamber and pick it up unless it's Outback or Carabas gift card. See Artie Pagan. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day.